Earlier this year, we as a community blasted the Mesh-tastic craze into the stratosphere, and it became sort of a viral hobby that swept the UK, with thousands of nodes popping up everywhere. While it's good, it has its flaws, and the main thing I wanted to explore was Laura Voice. If you don't know what Mesh-tastic is, then there's a playlist below, and Laura stands for Long Range. LoRa is based on spread spectrum modulation techniques, and today I wanted to share with you a new toy, in the form of the Retivis RB91 LoRa repeater system. So what is it? Is it legal? Does it work? Don't worry, I'm going to tell you. So what we have here is a repeater unit and two radios that come as a package. This is the repeater. It's a wall-mounted digital radio repeater that operates LoRa via a built-in LoRa module, and it's technically not a repeater either, which opens up a lot of doors from a legality point of view. It has a 15,000 mAh internal battery, it runs off the mains power supply and supports solar charging, for portable or long-term outdoor use. In standby mode, this thing will last 7 days, in transmit mode, it'll last 10 hours. We also have a pair of radios, these are Retivis RB24s and they're LoRa handsets that are only compatible with the repeater unit. So how does all of this work? Well, you switch it on out of the box and that's it. These handhelds along with the repeater mesh together, meaning the radios will communicate with each other in much the same way an ordinary two-way radio will. The LoRa modulation technique is combined with a data encoding technique that gives a broadband spread spectrum radio the received sensitivity of a very narrow band radio. LoRa radios can receive signals 10 times weaker than most other radios. The repeater is technically just another two-way radio with an internal PSU and a battery, meaning it'll talk to the handsets in direct mode too. The difference between this and a conventional two-way radio setup is that the use of spread spectrum technology in the form of LoRa means that like mesh-tastic nodes, these radios and the repeater pass traffic through each other, or hop, to send your transmission to other radios. This way you can achieve huge distances when compared to a conventional radio system. The repeater basically acts as another handset. The only difference is that you'd need to mount this high up on an external antenna to allow handsets further afield to mesh with the network for want of a better word. So let me be clear, this doesn't require a SIM card or 4G or any internet connection. It's a digital two-way radio system that meshes in much the same way Meshtastic does. I hope this makes sense. So let's look at the radios. You can connect up to 30 of these together in a mesh network, and they'll feed and help each other pass traffic to other radios and the repeater unit. The maximum hop amount is 30, meaning traffic will jump across 30 radios to reach everyone. They have an uncomplicated design, with a speaker and microphone on the front. On the left is the PTT, and underneath is a button that tells you what channel you're on, and a battery status button. On the right is an earpiece and programming jack, and on the top is the SMA antenna socket, channel select and volume on off knob. They come with a 1300mAh battery and output 5 watts, and have 16 channels that are programmable between 400 and 470 MHz. The RB24 has a 29 hour standby time and 10 hours of working time. You get two of these in the setup, but you can buy more separately, and when you switch them on, they'll communicate back to back. They come with a charging dock, belt clip and wrist strap. When you add the repeater in, it acts as a pass through, feeding your message to another handset. The repeater outputs 5 watts. You can see on the front that there's an external antenna socket, an on off and volume control as well as the channel select knob. We have power, charging and solar input LEDs, a speaker, a cooling fan, a PTT button which allows you to talk through the repeater and then two function buttons. PF1 gives you the channel number, and PF2 gives you the battery level, and when held, turns the repeater relay on or off, meaning you can either have it pass traffic, but have it come out of the speaker, or not. There's also an earpiece and a programming jack, which supports a speaker mic for use as a base station, and then there's a 12 volt solar input, and the mains AC input. The whole thing is encased in a metal housing, and comes with the hardware to install it onto the wall should you require. Setup is simple, you just power everything on and make sure everything's on the same channel. 
You can program this set up to your required frequencies, but you must stay within the law of course. Out of the box, the repeater and handsets come pre-programmed in the 70cm band for the UK, between 433 and 436, across 16 channels. Now let's look at the legal side of things, and I've worked with Retivis and the written rules on this, and my interpretation is that this is perfectly legal in the UK, under a set of circumstances. So, the recent Ofcom changes to the UK amateur radio framework highlighted two key pieces of information. Firstly, allowing foundation and intermediate license holders remote operation. Secondly, enabling beacon, gateway, data station and repeater use without an NOV, which is basically permission. A LoRa system falls into the beacon, gateway and data station category because, and this is based on my understanding, Unlike an analogue or digital voice repeater, it uses frequency modulated chirp pulses to modulate information. What I and Retivis call a repeater is actually a data gateway, and this can be used by foundation license holders or above in the UK, and of course the 5 watts is perfect for foundation license holders. Now, if my interpretation of these rules is incorrect and someone from Ofcom is watching this, I welcome clarity if we have this wrong, but going by the rules in black and white, the system is legal in the UK, as I and Retivis understand it. If this changes, and I do hear back, I'll film an update. So, the final thing to do is head out and do a couple of test transmissions. I'll mount the repeater in the attic on my Diamond V3000 antenna, and leave a handset down in the shack. I'll then drive a couple of miles away, and do a test back to base. In theory, the handset in the shack shouldn't be able to receive my call directly, and the repeater in the attic will feed the call to it instead. Ok, so I've come to some parkland about 3 miles away from home. The radio is on the desk in the shack, and the repeat is linked to the external antenna. Where I am here, we're at the same altitude as the radio at home, so I don't expect this radio to reach the one in the shack. I do however expect it to work with the repeater in play, so let's do a test. Ok, this is a test of the Retivis LoRa repeater system. Testing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This is a test of the Retivis LoRa repeater system. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So, a great setup there from Retivis. I was excited to get my hands on one of these, and I think it has some good use cases, like emergency comms, staying connected with friends close by and a bit further away, and amateur radio groups. If you want to take a look at this, I'll leave links in the description below. Thank mm -hmm. you.